Today, I'm here to request public assistance in locating suspects in connection to the Northern British Columbia investigations. As a result of the information and the appeal to public that we made yesterday in connection with the Dees Lake investigation and the disappearance of Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski, we were able to confirm new information and issue a new plea. For the past few days, investigators have been focusing their efforts on locating Cam and Briar, given that their vehicle and camper had been located on fire and the two were considered missing. We have also been working to identify a man whose body was discovered deceased two kilometers south of the vehicle fire at a highway pullout. Efforts continue to identify that man. Investigators have also been able to confirm that Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski have left British Columbia and have been spotted in northern Saskatchewan. We believe that they're likely continuing to travel. Though we don't have a possible destination, we can now confirm that they were last seen driving a gray 2011 Toyota RAV4. Given these latest developments, Cam and Briar are no longer considered missing. The RCMP are now considering Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski as suspects in the Dees Lake suspicious death and the double homicide of Lucas Fowler and China Dees. We're asking for the public, if you spot Briar or Cam, consider them dangerous. Do not approach, take no action, and call immediately 911. In order to assist our efforts to locate these two men, we are releasing new images taken recently. Cam McLeod is described as six foot four, approximately 169 pounds with dark hair and facial hair. He has brown eyes. Briar Schmigelski is described as six foot four, approximately 169 pounds with sandy hair. This investigation is very complex and ever evolving. Investigators continue to follow up on tips and reviewing the physical and digital ed evidence collected and sharing information. We once again ask you, if you have information and have not already spoken to police, please call us at our major crime tip line at 1-877-543-4822 or locally 778-290 5291. We remain committed to providing you the most up-to-date information and with uh, in an effort to advance our investigation and with any concerns related to public safety. Once again, we're requesting that you look carefully at these pictures of Cam and Briar. If you see them, do not approach, take no action, and immediately call 911. Thank you. Mm -hmm. the Yesterday, you looked at this, told us that it was still a missing person case. What has changed significantly? Because you admit that this was yesterday to make these two men suspects in three murders in one week. I think that is a testament of how dynamic and ever-changing the information is. Thanks to the public yesterday, we had no information as to Cam and Briar's whereabouts. And because we made the appeal yesterday, we now have new information where we've confirmed that they were seen in Northern British Columbia. We've been able to confirm that information within the last 24 hours. And I have been receiving new information, honestly, before I just stepped up on the stage, new information is still coming in. So, you know, these investigations are, are very quick moving. And yesterday we had information that we didn't, that we now, we have different information than we have today. Mm -hmm. that they've been spotted alive. Yeah. What makes them suspects at this point? You know, I can't go into the specifics with respect to how that determination is made. I can just tell you that the investigators are receiving new information, and that new information now leads us to believe and to take this very unprecedented step to call to the public and ask, if you have, if you have information about Cam or Briar's whereabouts, to please take no action and call 911. Well. 
we're we're not going into the specifics with respect to how that man died. We can just tell you that Cam and Breyer are wanted in relation to that man's death, and our efforts are still continuing in order to identify that man. Again, we're still going through the steps in order to confirm the details surrounding that man's death. Are you hesitant to say so because you don't want to go down the path of the fact that you potentially have a statement put on you? you know, at, this point, at this point, I think what's important to know is that Cam and Breyer wanted in relation to this man's death. The manner in which he died is not important at this point. What we want you to know is that we want the public and you, everybody who sees this today, to help us to locate Cam and Breyer. That's what we want you to know today. What would you speak to all three? Again, I can't go into the specific information. Perhaps uh, Assistant Commissioner Hackett can provide a little more detail. <clears throat> First off, I understand uh, the media's need or want to get as much information as they possibly can. But in any homicide investigation, it takes time. The, the amount of time that's passed since the onset of both of these investigations is relatively very quick. In order for us to uh, make, we don't make assumptions. We're, we're relying on evidence and facts. We also have to keep in mind the sensitivities around identifying the individual and contacting his family. So once those efforts are completed and once we have made a positive identification, more facts will be able to be relayed to the public and to the media. What, what I'm going to do to try and help explain a little bit is that I think everyone would agree that we don't want to say anything or do anything that would jeopardize future prosecution or impact the integrity of the current investigation. The need for additional information, we, we can't satisfy that right now because we have to uh, make sure that our investigation is, uh, the integrity of the investigation is upheld. And, and we, we can't share some of that information that we have. With all due respect, we, we get that. The public gets that. Nobody wants the investigation to go sideways because details have been released prematurely. But people are worried in these northern communities about whether or not the same people are responsible for three deaths. I think you deserve well, the right to know is, is well, a flawed fact. I think you've... I think you've heard that uh, the individuals that we're looking for today are suspects in both events. And Have you and made contact with the, with the person that you were wishing to speak to yesterday that was in the sketch? Those efforts are continuing, and we have yet to make contact with them. Is there any sense of motive in this case? Where these two suspects were last seen, and what? Did you go with the vehicle, the location, the timing of the vehicle stolen, all of that? That would help you. I know it would help you, but it's also touching on evidence that I'm not prepared to speak about today at this early juncture in this investigation. We have to, we have to be very clear about there are many people that we are yet to speak to that have key facts that could build upon the current evidence and information that we have. Any information that builds upon that, impacts that, changes somebody's memory or recollection would be a negative to, from an investigational standpoint. And frankly, we're not prepared to do that. We are not going to risk the investigation. With respect, last scene in Saskatchewan, when, what part would they be in Ontario now while we know? We are continuing to uh, work across uh, the country with our law enforcement partners in attempting to locate their, their last uh, movements and track their last movements. Tell us where these images, these new images you were Joel, I'll pass that back to you if you want yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, can t we can confirm that these images were taken in northern Saskatchewan. And I really, I mean, we have to recognize at this point that Cam or Briar may have changed their appearance and they may also be driving a different vehicle. The last known uh, photographs that we have are these that we're issuing here. Uh, and we don't want you to get caught up in the fact that this is what they look like. We want you very closely to look at their face, recognizing they could have changed their appearance or attempted to change their appearance. They could be wearing different clothing. They could be driving a different vehicle. So we're asking you now, if you have any information in relation to Cam or Briar's location, to not approach and call 911. So 
These pictures were taken, uh, last known to be taken in northern Saskatchewan, but again, they could have been moving. That's why we're reaching out to the public across all of Canada. We've issued information to our, our policing agencies across, uh, across this entire country in our efforts to locate Cam and Breyer. Is there any sense of motive in this case? Yeah, you know, I mean, those are, again, those are uh, evidence and uh, that we're looking at and not in a position to provide specific details with respect to an ongoing investigation. Do you have any information about these two guys in terms of, you know, their, their online history, what they may be into, what their, uh, you know, do they have any, uh, have they posted anything online or do they have anything in their past that would inform your, your investigation or inform your, your finding that these are, these guys are suspects? No, I mean, at this point, they were initially missing persons, and it's new information that investigators have received that leads now us to believe that Cam and Briar are suspects in the double homicide of, Bri of uh, Miss uh, Deese and Mr. Fowler, and also in this, the man's death in Deese Lake. I don't have those details, I'm sorry. You don't know if they've got records? No, I do not. Certainly, we have been in, in uh, contact with both their families, um, and those efforts are underway in order to, you know, reach out to those families and ask them to assist us. Just like we're asking the public assistance here, we would also ask those families to assist us in, in locating them. I personally have not been in touch with their families, um, and so I don't have details with respect to how they're feeling. Uh, I mean, as a mother myself, I can just say if this, you know, yesterday they were missing and now we've changed them to suspects, um, you know, it, I'm certain that they're being impacted by this news. And is there anything else you can say about the town now that's brought before the Amber Lake Police and Amber's actually no longer with the I, I don't have details relating to, I mean, I know that the truck and the camper were quite badly burned uh, and those investigations are, that investigation is underway um, and ongoing. Um, I'm not sure other than to say that, you know, we're still looking for Cam and Breyer. Uh, specific information with respect to why it was burned, that stuff, we don't, ha we're not in a position to provide that. Again, I mean, the, the investigation's ongoing, and, uh, you know, we, as Assistant Commissioner uh, Hackett referenced, we have to be cognizant that uh, we are looking for Cam and Breyer in relation to this, the, the Fowler and Deese homicide and miss the, the man's death in Deese Lake, and we have to protect the integrity of the investigation as it moves forward and have to be able to verify and confirm any information before we provide that and also um, recognize that we're moving now towards a court process with the hope of, uh, you know, advancing this investigation. Well, I mean, how investigators have made that determination, uh, they've made the determination now that Cam and Breyer are wanted in relation to, or are suspects in relation to, the Fowler D's double homicide and the man's death in D's Lake. How they've made those determinations, I can't speak to. I can just tell you that we're confident now in saying that they're suspects in relation to those three investigations. For me, now, these investigations are um, very fluid, and they early in the investigation, we did issue a press release 
asking the public for information. How the public picks that up or how it gets picked up, we do our best to disseminate the information, asking our policing partners in order to help us to get the information out. It wasn't until they were identified that uh, people seemed to take interest. But why did you have to take that step of them being identified for the police to move forward? We were advancing that. Well, on Monday, we issued a press release. We were working hard in order to identify the person or persons now responsible for this. Any any investigation that uh, the police, the RCMP, embark upon is, as I said, predicated on on evidence and facts. Uh, we're talking about remote area that we need to get forensic examinations done, scour scenes, look for evidence before we make determinations that we're comfortable enough to attribute to a fact pattern or we believe is evidentiary. The worst thing any investigator can do is to mislead the public without the facts. Sometimes that translates into waiting longer. What I would ask in this instance is that uh, people be patient. As I said, this is a, this is a fast moving investigation and uh, w is compounded by several factors, which include the vastness of the North, the individual, the fact that individuals have made some effort to, to move out of jurisdictions. All those things contribute to our ability to quickly uh, identify additional information or additional facts. And these have played a, a factor here. But I could tell you, from my experience in homicide investigations, this homicide investigation has advanced to the state that we're here today extremely quickly, based on the facts that we have and the evidence that we have to date. Are you able to, at this point, whether it's Surrey, the missing men from Surrey, I take it that case is now severed from the matters you're talking about today? We don't believe that's uh, associated at all. We've uh, communicated with law enforcement, RCMP, uh, across the country. Uh, our provincial real-time intelligence center has been uh, phenomenal in this investigation in quickly advancing information when it's been known through our law enforcement uh, community so that frontline police officers have the information, pictures, other, other information so that they can react in, in enhancing uh, public safety. And their own safety. Well, we've we've made uh, appeals to the public to ensure that they they check in with loved ones, uh, identify you know, travel plans, et cetera, routes. Um, I can't speak to any other missings. We're not aware of anything, but we are, our focus right now is to locate these two individuals. Okay, That's what we're, we're focused on. One more question. Can you give us some information about these two guys in terms of what skills they might have, what kind of weapon they might have based on, on the information you have, just preparing the public for what they may deal with if they encounter these guys? I think it speaks to itself, the fact that we've asked the public to please not approach them. We don't know specifically, and as um, uh, Sergeant Janelle spoke to, is a person can change their appearance, they can change a vehicle, uh, they can change their clothing. So we don't know exactly what they may, what, you know, what they may be carrying or what, what the, even what their thoughts are. The important message today is that the public be vigilant if they see anything suspicious, that they call 911 immediately. So I hope that kind of answers your question. Just to be clear, so there would be no information given on, on when they were seen in Northern Ireland. Is that right? Uh, we can, we can uh, confirm that we, the RCMP, got the information that they were in Northern Saskatchewan. We were advised of that 
yesterday, so 24 hours ago. No, we confirmed, we the RCMP confirmed that information. So when exactly they were there, I cannot confirm. Okay, thank you. We're gonna give, we're gonna have the French statement. Uh, if you have further questions, I would encourage you to email those questions to you, but we do need to read the French statement as well. Um, if you have questions, we will, you can email them to us. Again, we're still work we're still working through the timeline. We can just tell you that they were last seen in this 2011 gray Rav4 Toyota Rav4. So if you see this vehicle or Cam or Briar, please do not approach and call 911.